MTA is committed to providing you the best in transit and we're interested in your thoughts about MTA services. That's why we feature a segment called Ask the MTA. On each Ask the MTA, we give you an opportunity to ask MTA personnel questions you have concerning transit. And here to answer your questions related to Mark Rail is Mark Chief Communications Officer, David Johnson. We took to the streets for your questions and here's the first question. Hi, my name is Patricia Ned of Baltimore City. And my question is, concern is, the Mark Train is a wonderful service. Why can't the Mark Train run on the weekends for people? Well, we want to operate weekend service. We've had plans for several years to operate service on the weekends. However, it is primarily a budgetary factor. Um, plans were drawn up several years ago, but then the economic crisis hit, which, uh, as everyone knows, impacted the MTA's budget as well as all state agencies. But you have to know that's a frequent question. People it would is. love to have that. It is, Joanna. But we we is get, we get but that But is it lot. really an issue, I mean, uh, of um, also with Amtrak? Because I know Amtrak does offer weekend service for folks. Yes, they do offer weekend service uh, on the Penn line, okay. uh, just the stations that they stop at. Um, Amtrak has indicated a willingness to allow us to operate weekend service. Uh, we really just await the funding. If the funding would present itself, we would, would uh, be happy to start weekend service. I like the sound of that. Now our next question. Hi, I'm Stephen from Cincinnati, Ohio. My question is, how many stops does the Mark train have? So they're asking about the number of train stops. I mean, this is everything from, what, the Camden line to the Penn line to yes. the Brunswick line? It is. Um, we have 47 stops across uh, three different jurisdictions, the state of Maryland, of course. We have three stations in West Virginia and, of course, Washington Union Station in, in Washington, D.C. And it's a, a pretty unique system in that um, most commuter rail agencies around the country have all their stations in one state. We actually, if you count D.C. as a separate entity, have... Uh, stations in three different jurisdictions. That's pretty amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it's an unusual s uh, setup for a commuter rail agency, but it works well. Uh, obviously, the vast majority of our passengers board and detrain at Washington Union Station. Right. Um, we also have um, uh, hub stations outside on the, like, the edge of the Washington Beltway at uh, uh -huh. New Carrollton, um, Greenbelt, and Rockville as well. So that, there's additional connections to even other, other, I guess, transit systems like yeah, WMATA. Well, like WMATA, uh, like the Prince George's County bus system, right. the like Montgomery bus, County bus system. Uh, and also our stations range, unlike metros, you know, every metro station pretty much looks the same. Every right. light rail station pretty much looks the same. Our stations really vary widely from some very small facilities to facilities like Union Station in Washington that are very large and have uh, tens of thousands of passengers board a day. And we have smaller stations out on the Brunswick line that may have 20, 25 passengers a day. So it's a real wide range of, uh, of stations and types of service. That's pretty, you educated me today. Now on to our next question. Hi, I'm Lisa Christopher Stein. I'm from Baltimore City. And I'd like to know, when will there be more marked trains for Penn Station? Oh boy, that's a, that's a favorite question. It about is a favorite question. Um, we, uh, back in uh, March of this year, we implemented a major schedule change on the Penn line. Okay. Uh, in which we did inter introduce two additional frequencies in each direction. Yeah, these were during rush. peaks. These during are... rush hours, yes. Okay. Two additional trains southbound in the morning and two additional trains in the evening going, coming back to Baltimore. In addition to additional service up to Martin State Airport. Um, and also some off-peak direction service that was increased now, Has that well. helped with some of the overcrowding? And yes, it has. It's, it's made a, a significant difference. It's really spread people out more. Instead of having uh, a, a few really, really large nine, ten-car trains, we right. now have several six- and seven-car trains, which has a double benefit. It reduces overcrowding. It also um, reduces the strain on the locomotives. Right. It's, it, the accel uh, acceleration out of the stations is faster, and it, it's really been a win-win all around. As for additional service in the mm -hmm. future, um, right now we really kind of are at capacity with uh, the available number of rail cars we have. Additional service would be pretty difficult at this point to consider, but in the future, if we are able to procure new equipment, uh, we would definitely look at expanding Penn Line service. It, it's by far and away our, our highest ridership. But it looks like you're really giving people options with regard to commuting. I mean, you know, spacing it out really is probably a much more efficient way when you lack the capacity to expand. A absolutely. Yeah. And that's, uh, that was the main, one of the main objectives of the, the major schedule change back in March. Uh, it really did, it was the first significant overhaul of the Penn Line schedule in nearly 10 years. And that's been incredibly responsive to what many of the customers have been saying for years. Yes. Now on to our next question. I'm Glenn Al Black from Baltimore, Maryland. And I want to know how often does the mock train run from Baltimore to Washington, D.C.? 
Now, that's kind of an ambiguous question mm -hmm. because, you know, we have two separate lines that right. run from Baltimore to D.C., so frequency-wise. Frequency-wise, um, the Camden line is, prim is really rush hour only. Okay. Well, there is no service in the middle of the day. Um, southbound in the morning, there's a train about every 30 minutes out okay. of Camden Station. And then northbound in the evening out of Washington, approximately every 30 minutes uh, to Camden Yard Station. Okay. Um, there's also some limited reverse flow service, uh, like uh, northbound from Washington in the morning. There's three trains, and then there's three trains south from Camden in the evening to Washington. Okay. Penn Station uh, has significantly more frequency. Uh, during the rush hours, we average a 10 to 15 minute headway uh, in the peak of the rush hours in the morning and the evening, headed down to Washington, um, and then of course in the evening coming back. Uh, with uh, off-peak services in both directions. Our off-peak service is about every hour wow. uh, between the two cities. And um, a couple of years ago, we expanded our service at request of our customers to provide more late-night service. Okay. So now the last train leaving Baltimore for Washington is 9.05 p.m., and the last train leaving Washington coming back to Baltimore is 10.30 p.m. You know, folks have a lot of options, mm -hmm. and that's I guess that's the biggest thing, because you can really plan a trip if you have options. You can decide to work later. Mm -hmm. You can schedule after-hours events with coworkers. Right. So it really gives you a lot of options. And having the options is important because um, you don't know what you're, like you go in the start of the day, you exactly. don't know that you have to work late. So that 10.30 train, it honestly is not our busiest train, right. but you rarely see the same people on that 10.30 train. Right. Just the presence of that train, having like the option. It's, it's like a, a safety, safety net. Exactly. It's a safety net. If you want to decide you want to go to the Nationals game, not that anybody in Baltimore would want to go to the Nationals game, yes. but um, <laughs> in case you decide you want to stay for the Nationals game or work late or have a happy hour or yeah. what have you, you can, you can do that and still get home by train knowing that 1030 train will be there. And our next question? My name is Andrea Silva. I just moved to the area. And my question is, can I buy a ticket from MTA online before I get to the station? Now, this is always a thing. You know, people are trying to, they're sort of confused as to how they purchase their marked train ticket. You can purchase online uh, at commuterdirect.com. Okay. Um, however, that's not an instantaneous ticket. That does have to be mailed to you. So you have to allow... Uh, commuter Direct says five to seven days. Okay. Um, that's also how, for those uh, that work in Washington and have the SMART benefits from the federal government, all of the SMART benefits are now being pushed uh, electronically through Commuter Direct. Yeah. The actual paper that's a cost savings the, too. Major cost savings. Uh, the actual paper vouchers are being eliminated. Uh, you will still get a ticket in the mail. You'll still get a physical ticket to show right. the conductor on the train. But your vouchers are now all electronic. And that is done through Commuter Direct as well. It's a very user friendly website, mm -hmm. uh, very easy to work with. And you can purchase one way tickets and round trip tickets on commuterdirect.com, but it's not an instantaneous. That's response. good to know. And That's also, um, at most stations have a ticket machine, an Amtrak quick track That's machine. What folks need to and know. you can use there, or if the t train station does not have a ticket machine, you can pay the conductor on board. All righty. My name is Carlos Liu, I'm from Santa Monica, California. And I'm wondering, when I'm riding the MARC train, where can I find a schedule? Okay, so this is, this is one of those dilemmas. Folks are looking for actual train schedules when they're on the train. What would you advise them to do? Um, we unfortunately really don't have a place on the train to store schedules themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we do encourage folks before their trip to go online, uh, www.mta.maryland.gov. Uh, we have uh, a number of resources on there for all of the MTA, but the MARC train as well. We have our schedules. Uh, you can also have a, we have a new trip planner where you okay. can tell it uh, the system where specifically you're going to and from, and it can integrate the different modes of the MTA. Uh, printed timetables are available at stations where we actually have a, an indoor station facility. Mm -hmm. Um, the Penn and the Camden line is one folder, and the Brunswick line is a separate folder. Now, I know there are some features, at least they're beta testing on the website right now, the ability for you to use your cell phone. Like if your cell phone can mm -hmm. read PDFs, mm -hmm. some of the schedules are online, yes. so you can go online if you have a mobile device. They are. In fact, I do that with my phone. I have yes. the Mark Penn line timetable mm -hmm. in my phone, and I just pull it right up and look at the PDF. We also like to let people make sure people are aware of our Mark Tracker system which is a GPS-based system mm -hmm. that uh, shows you exactly where a train is uh, at any given time. It's a full system map, and the trains are overlaid on the map. Wow. It shows you if the train's on time, uh -huh. slightly delayed, major delayed. Um, and there were recently some enhancements uh, to the Mark Tracker system. Um, the, trains now, the location of the trains now updates every 30 seconds. Okay. And also the software that runs this website is now more friendly to PDAs and other mobile devices. That's good to know. That's an important customer resource. Yes. 
Now, our next and last question is one we received by email. It's from Gretchen Samsky of Kearney. Gretchen writes, I'm new to the MTA and Mark Train. With the winter weather season not far off and in preparation for it, what electronic information options are available for alerts or advisories on Mark Train? And do you provide text messaging, email alerts, or some form of PDA updates for Mark delays? Well, that's an interesting question because that exactly speaks to what we talked about as far as notifying people with electronic things. Absolutely. And when you have inclement weather, um, such as we, our uh, recent weather around here, the hurricane, yeah. the earthquake, uh, it's really critical to get the word out to the passengers of what's going on. Uh, they may not like to hear <laughs> that their train's late, but at least they know it's late. They know about when to expect it. Uh, we have an e-notification system that sends uh, messages out when a train is 10 or more minutes late, uh, provides supplemental updates. Uh, Customers can subscribe to this service and by either email or text message or both, whichever mm -hmm. they prefer. Um, they also customize it to which line they ride okay. and also to uh, like what time of day it is and uh, what stations they ride to and from. Now, I also understand that we have transit team updates. So we yes. are, have television, radio, and the website. Right, and the transit team is another uh, part of the MTA uh, uh, communications operation, which communicates more with uh, radio and television stations to let them know when there are problems, um, the transit team calls our operations center every 20 minutes during the rush hour okay. to find out the status of marked trains and if there are disruptions or delays. So she doesn't have to worry about us get, getting in touch with her. We're going to use every mechanism possible. Correct. And we also, uh, uh, fairly new is uh, Twitter. We are on Twitter now. Yeah, we the, are. the MTA is on yeah. Twitter. That automatically uh, rebroadcasts the emails that go out to our customers. Okay. So you can uh, check us out uh, uh, on Twitter at MTA Maryland. That's, That's our great. Twitter handle. So they can follow us. I they like that. They can follow us. They can tweet us. I'm telling you, we are up in the new age, yes. the digital age. Well, I appreciate you coming and talking to us hey, today. Joe, glad to be here. And I hope you come back again because you know what? There are always things that people care about related to our Mark Train system. Absolutely. I'd be glad to. I can't wait. If you have questions and you'd like to ask the MTA, visit the MTA television show link at mta.maryland.gov or drop us a line and check us out on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Take care.